In this section, we are interested in building some word vectors that will capture some semantic meaning of the words. So we will start with the one word encoding. With the one word encoding, we can put one to a single location and let the vector have zeros for the rest of the values. Here, we are going to apply that to these three words, cat, dog, and car, and we are going to create these vectors, 100, 010, and 001. These vectors do not capture any kind of semantic meaning of the word. In order to understand similarity between the vectors, we can use dot product. Dot product simply means multiplying each item in a vector and then summing them up. If this is a large number, it means the vectors are similar. If they are not, it means they are not similar. So similarly, when we run dot product here, we will see that all of them are zero. In this section, we are going to talk about word to vector. This is a probabilistic model that will allow us to create these word embeddings. When we successfully create the word vectors, we are going to see that when we run the dot product for related words, we will have some large values. So when we compare the dot product between cat and dog and between the dog and car, we will see a large number. Let's start with the skip gram model. The skip gram model assumes that we can create some surrounding words using a center word. With this assumption, as this is a probabilistic model, we will try to write down some probabilities and also try to calculate them. For example, for the sentence, the man loves his son, we will try to calculate this probability that for a given word, center word loves, what is the probability that we will see this context words, the man, his son. So we also have another assumption here. The other assumption is that, given the center word, we can actually calculate these surrounding words independently. By using this second assumption, this actually allows us to break down this probability calculation into smaller pieces so that we can easily calculate. In this case, we are going to get these probabilities, the probability that the center, given that center word loves, what is the probability of seeing the around it, for example, times the same situation where we have the center word loves, what is the probability of seeing the man, and it goes on like that. So we can calculate this probability in an easier way. And this is going to be used to, useful further. Let's see more details. The full implementation details will not be covered in this class as it is out of scope. For that reason, I'm going to leave some links for whoever is interested in learning more. So let's continue. We said that with these assumptions, we are able to actually calculate these smaller probabilistic terms. Before we get to that, let's also define our word vectors. In this setting, we are going to have the center and the context as the place where we, where we calculate these things. So we are going to call center word as WC and the context word with WO. And also we will have separate embeddings for the center word, we will have VC. For the context word, we will have UO. As a word in a vocabulary can be both in the center and in the context, we will actually have two vectors for every single word. Let's also see how we can calculate these probabilities. Just like we mentioned before, we can use dot product to see the similarity between vectors. We can apply the same idea here. For example, we can take a look at the word vectors. We can take the dot product between the center and the context. And if this is a large number, it means that they are similar. If this is a small number, it means that they are not similar. So we can use dot product to measure the similarity. So in this probability calculation, we are going to use that idea. But that number is not necessarily a probability number. So it's going to be an arbitrary number afterwards. So in order to scale those numbers, we are actually going to use the softmax function here. And in the denominator, we will also have this term, where we will also calculate these dot products in this given window. And by using this, we are going to be normalizing this term. So in Vertivec, we are trying to correctly predict all these context words for all the center words. 
So if you try to put this into an objective, we are trying to maximize the probability of doing that. There are many more details to the implementation of this, so you can check out the link for that, but we can write this down as a likelihood, and from that we can get a loss function. And we can try to train a machine learning model with a corpus and try to minimize the loss function. As I said before, all details are provided in this link. There is also another way of calculating these word vectors, which is called continuous bag of words. In this one, we do the reverse thing. This time, we use the context words to predict the center word. In this case, we write down the probability like this. What is the probability of seeing the word center, given that we see the words, the man, his son, around it? There are many more different embedding models, so we've only seen word to wake. For the others, we can see Glow, ConceptNet, Number Batch, and FastX. As we mentioned before, for the words that are semantically similar, we will have some similar word vectors. In this case, when we examine word vectors for certain words, we see this relationship. For example, when we look at the word vectors for man and woman, boy and girl, when we take the difference between these, the resulting vectors are similar to each other. Similarly, when we use some word vectors from ConceptNet number batch and apply some PCA on them to make sure that we are able to display this in two dimension, we see some interesting results. For example, when we plot these words in different forms, we see some relatively similar placement. A more interesting result is here, when we plot some animals and some uh, forms of transplantation, we also see them as kind of like a group or clustered in different areas. 